You know, you still need help from the boss. We need help from the boss. Somebody said to me the other day, you're the most famous person in the world by far. I said, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. They said, yes, you are. I said, no. They said, who's more famous? I said, Jesus Christ. In the bustling heart of Washington, D.C., the sun began to set, casting a golden hue over the iconic monuments that symbolized the very essence of American democracy. Inside a private conference room, the air was thick with anticipation. Donald Trump, the former president and a polarizing figure in American politics, sat at the head of a polished mahogany table, flanked by his advisors who were nervously shuffling through reports. Recent polls indicated a surge in support for Trump as he prepared to announce his candidacy for the 2024 presidential election. The atmosphere was electric, filled with a mix of excitement and anxiety. Little did they know, the evening was about to take a surreal turn. As the clock struck five, the door swung open with an unexpected flourish. A brilliant light flooded the room, momentarily blinding everyone inside. When their eyes adjusted, they beheld a figure clothed in a simple robe, emanating an aura of warmth and serenity. The advisors exchanged bewildered glances, unsure of how to react. Donald, however, leaned back in his chair, his trademark bravado intact. Well, who are you supposed to be? A new candidate. He quipped, a smirk tugging at his lips. The figure smiled gently, revealing an otherworldly calm. I am Jesus, he said, his voice soothing yet commanding. A ripple of confusion swept through the room, but Donald, ever the skeptic, raised an eyebrow. Jesus, you've got to be kidding me. I've seen some pretty wild things in my career, but this is something else. Jesus chuckled softly, the sound echoing like a gentle breeze. I assure you, I am very real, and I am here to talk to you about your journey and the path that lies ahead for you and your country. Intrigued yet cautious, Donald leaned forward, his interest piqued. All right, I'm listening. What do you have to say about 2024? I'm planning a comeback, and believe me, it's going to be tremendous. I could use all the help I can get. With a calm demeanor, Jesus took a seat across from him. The world is at a crossroads, Donald. People are yearning for hope, for guidance. Your journey, with all its triumphs and trials, holds the potential to inspire not just your supporters, but a broader audience. The question is, how do you choose to lead? Donald's mind raced. Look, I've been through a lot, he replied, gesturing expansively. The media, the impeachment, the whole election fraud debacle. But I've got a strong base. They love me. His voice carried a hint of defensiveness, as if trying to convince himself as much as Jesus. Yes, but love can be complicated, Jesus responded, his gaze steady. You must connect with not just your base, but also those who feel unheard. Empathy is a powerful tool in leadership. When you listen, truly listen, you can lead. Trump paused, the weight of the words settling in. Empathy? That's not really my style. I'm more about winning, about being the best. It's a competitive world out there. His brow furrowed, skepticism evident. True, Jesus acknowledged, but sometimes the best way to win is to show understanding and compassion. Look to your own experiences. They shape who you are. Use them to build bridges, not walls. Speaking of unlocking untapped potential, if you're ready to start attracting huge wealth effortlessly, starting today, don't miss out on the link in the comments below. Discover the shocking wealth secrets uncovered by a rogue NASA scientist, secrets that could change your life. Now, let's dive back into the journey. As the conversation deepened, Donald began to see glimpses of a new strategy emerging, one that blended his combative nature with a softer approach. 
He envisioned rallies where he didn't just tout accomplishments, but shared stories of everyday Americans, those struggling, those hopeful. So you think if I show a softer side, it will make a difference? He asked, the gears in his mind turning. Jesus nodded. People crave authenticity. They want to feel seen and understood. In the chaos of modern politics, kindness can be a radical act. The year 2024 can be a year of healing, but it begins with you. With a furrowed brow, Trump leaned back in his chair, wrestling with the implications of Jesus' words. So what you're saying is I should turn the other cheek. That's not exactly what my supporters want to hear. Not necessarily, Jesus replied, a hint of a smile playing on his lips. You can still be strong and assertive. Channel that energy into positive change. Advocate for unity while standing firm in your beliefs. Leadership is not just about power. It's about serving those you lead. As the discussion continued, Donald found himself reflecting on his past. The controversies, the rallies, the fervor of supporters that sometimes felt more like a fan club than a movement. I fought hard for everything I have, he said, his voice lowering. Is it really worth it to change now? Change can be daunting, but it can also be transformative, Jesus assured him. Think about the legacy you want to leave. You have the power to inspire not just with your words, but with your actions. Lead with love, and you might be surprised at the outcomes. The two men engaged in a passionate dialogue, weaving through topics of governance, love, and the essence of leadership. Jesus spoke of service, the importance of lifting others, while Trump interjected with anecdotes from his business days and political career. He felt both challenged and intrigued, a mixture of skepticism and curiosity swirling within him. Jesus, Trump finally said, leaning in as if sharing a secret, if I were to take your advice, what would be the first step? It's one thing to talk about compassion, but it's another to implement it in a campaign. Start by listening, Jesus replied, his eyes glimmering with wisdom. Visit communities that feel forgotten. Engage with those who oppose you. Seek to understand their concerns. When you demonstrate a willingness to listen, you'll find that walls begin to crumble. Donald nodded slowly, absorbing the weight of Jesus' guidance. I could do that. Maybe host town halls where I actually hear people out instead of just rallying the base. It could be different. The idea felt foreign yet invigorating, a spark igniting within him. Different can be powerful, Jesus encouraged. Change begins with courage and a willingness to grow. Remember, it's about connection. The future is not fixed, but it is filled with possibilities. You have the power to shape it for the better. As the night drew to a close, the light in the room shifted again, a soft glow illuminating Jesus' features. Donald, know this. The road ahead will be challenging, but if you remain true to yourself, while embracing the wisdom of love and empathy, you can forge a new path. With that, the room began to fade, the outlines of furniture blurring as if wrapped in a dream. Trump felt a sense of peace wash over him, a clarity he hadn't experienced in years. Wait, how will I know what to do next? He called out, but the figure of Jesus was already dissolving into the light. In the days that followed, Trump found himself reflecting on their profound conversation. He began to craft a new narrative for his campaign, one that emphasized empathy and community engagement. He initiated a series of town hall meetings, genuinely reaching out to constituents, listening to their stories. The reactions were mixed at first. Some were skeptical, others intrigued. But as the weeks passed, something unexpected happened people began to respond to his authenticity. The 2024 campaign took on a different flavor as Trump blended his traditional rhetoric with heartfelt messages. He spoke of families struggling to make ends meet, of communities ravaged by division. 
His rallies, once a platform solely for boasting accomplishments, transformed into spaces of dialogue. Voters began to notice the change, and some skeptics softened, drawn in by his new approach. Polls began to reflect this shift. As he ventured into neighborhoods long overlooked, the reception grew warmer. Trump learned to embrace not just his base, but those outside it as well. He discovered that engaging with a wider audience not only expanded his reach, but also rejuvenated his spirit. I never thought I'd find common ground with those folks, he admitted to one of his advisors, but maybe that's the key. As the election approached, the narrative surrounding Trump was no longer just about being a divisive figure. Instead, it became about resilience, the capacity for growth, and the possibility of healing in a fractured nation. His supporters, once eager for a combative stance, found themselves drawn to this new message of unity. On election night, as the results rolled in, Trump watched the screen, his heart racing with anticipation. Victory was within reach, but more importantly, he felt something he hadn't anticipated, a sense of hope. The campaign had morphed into more than a political battle. It had become a journey toward a better future for all. As he took the stage to deliver his victory speech, he reflected on that fateful meeting. I met someone who taught me that to lead is to serve, he began, the crowd hushed in anticipation. Together, we will build a nation where every voice matters, where we listen, and where we love. The applause erupted, thunderous and reverberating through the hall. But in that moment, Trump felt a deeper connection with the audience, a shared vision for a future that was not just his, but theirs as well. He realized that his journey, infused with newfound purpose, was not merely about political dominance. It was about transforming the landscape of leadership itself. In the years to come, Trump would look back on that encounter as a turning point, a moment where the possibility of change flickered into being. The legacy of 2024 would be shaped not just by policies or platforms, but by the reminder that even in the fiercest battles, compassion could pave the way to victory. In the aftermath of the election, Trump faced challenges that would test his resolve. Critics remained skeptical, and the divisions in the country were far from healed. Yet, he was determined to hold on to the lessons learned from his meeting with Jesus. He initiated community programs aimed at fostering dialogue across political divides, bringing together people from different backgrounds to share their stories and experiences. At one town hall, a woman stood up, tears in her eyes. I didn't believe in you before, but now I see someone who wants to listen, she said, her voice breaking. I feel like my voice matters. In that moment, Trump understood the profound impact of his new approach. The connection he felt with the woman and the audience was palpable, igniting a passion within him to continue this journey of healing. As months turned into years, the country began to see gradual shifts. More citizens engaged in discussions about issues that mattered to them. The rhetoric on both sides softened and bridges began to form where once there were walls. Trump's leadership style evolved, embracing the complexity of the human experience rather than oversimplifying it. He became a symbol of resilience, not just for his supporters, but for those who had once stood against him. In the quiet moments of reflection, he often returned to that encounter with Jesus, a guiding light in his quest for growth. He understood that leadership was not about absolute power. It was about stewardship, empathy, and serving the people. The weight of the office became less about authority and more about responsibility, a responsibility to unite, to uplift, and to inspire. As the next presidential election approached, Trump was no longer the divisive figure he once was. Instead, he positioned himself as a unifier, advocating for policies that resonated with a diverse electorate. His rallies became vibrant gatherings where hope was the prevailing theme, transcending political affiliations. The media, once relentless in their criticism, began to acknowledge the shift, 
highlighting the stories of connection and understanding that emerged from his campaign. On election night, as he prepared to address the nation once more, Trump felt a mixture of excitement and gratitude. Regardless of the outcome, he knew that he had embarked on a journey that changed not only him, but the fabric of American politics. As he stepped onto the stage, he smiled at the sea of faces in the crowd. Tonight, we celebrate not just a victory, but a movement, he declared, his voice resonating with conviction. We've shown that love can overcome division, that empathy can bridge gaps. Together, we are crafting a new narrative for our great nation, a narrative where every voice is heard and every story matters. As the crowd erupted in applause, Trump felt an overwhelming sense of purpose wash over him. The future was bright, not because of political victories alone, but because of the connections forged along the way. In that moment, he understood the true meaning of leadership, the ability to inspire, to uplift, and to serve with love. And somewhere in the ether, the spirit of Jesus smiled, knowing that the seed of understanding had taken root in a heart once hardened by ambition. The encounter had transformed not just a man but a nation, revealing the profound truth that the path to greatness is often paved with compassion, empathy, and a willingness to listen. In a world often divided by differences, perhaps this story reminds us that true strength lies not in building walls, but in opening doors to understanding, connection, and growth. If you too seek transformation in your life, remember that change starts with a single step, a shift in perspective, or even a simple choice to listen. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Don't forget to explore more in the first pinned comments links below. And until next time, let's keep the spirit of connection and compassion alive in everything we do.